Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the first in a series of webinars from Bulldog Reporter called Industry Insights. I'm Richard Carapel, editor of Bulldog Reporter and the Daily Dog, one of the web's leading sources of PR and marketing, communications, news, and opinions. From hot-button industry issues and the latest research studies to PR agency developments and media news, you can find it all at bulldogreporter.com. We're very happy to welcome today's guest, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, author, and Bulldog Awards judge, Tom Hallman, Jr. Tom's Hello, going to share Richard. his value. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. No problem. Just going to tell everyone that Tom's going to share his valuable knowledge on the art of storytelling so you can leave here today with a better understanding of how to first and foremost find that story in your news, extract it, and then tell that story to the world. No question, every PR pro needs to learn this valuable art form in order to do the best possible work for clients. Tom will be responding to questions during this presentation, so if you have a question for him, please share it on Twitter at thallmanjr, and remember to use the hashtag, which is on your screen, pound sign BDR Insights. And now, let's welcome Tom Holman Jr. Greetings, Tom. Hello, everybody, and uh, thanks for being part of these uh, this panel. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to give my general overview on why story matters. Um, we live in an incredibly complicated and overstimulated world where we get information from Twitter, Facebook, newspapers, magazines, videos. And to cut through that to get to the reader or the viewer or the, the consumer, story is the most effective way to do that because we are hardwired for storytelling. It's how we take facts, which are um, a dime a dozen, and make them meaningful for the consumer. And I'm going to use the word consumer in the broadest sense of the word. And that means somebody who will stick with a story or a commercial or a, a video for more than 10 seconds, more than click on it. And the reason they do that is not because of what the intellectual material is, not because of the facts, but because the information, the product, the character resonates with them emotionally and they find themselves caught up with it. And I think of, I'm going to give you an example from a story I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to give you an example from a, an advertisement that uh, has really stuck with me, and then something from the uh, the entries I've been judging that I, I found was really innovative. And again, all of these are storytelling. The first one is something I'm doing. United Gospel Mission. They have them in every city. They want to they want to do a story. To do a story about an organization requires the the, the organization to have a face on the, the the story. So when you're thinking about who you're pitching, who your client is, it might not necessarily be the chairman of the board. It might not be the founder of the company. It could be somebody very, quote, low level that really has a better story to tell. And in this case, that's what's happened to me. There's a man who volunteers to, to pour coffee daily for homeless people. And he played minor league baseball in the 40s and 50s with uh, the former mayor of New York, Cuomo. And that, that makes it an incredibly rich story, which tells the story of Union Gospel Mission through the eyes of this character because people will want to know, how did you get there? What happened to your baseball career? What happened? That, that drives us. Now, when you're listening to me, I, you might think, well, that's just uh, you know theory. But think about why do you like watching movies or TV? Why do you why do you when you sit down for a cup of coffee with somebody, why do you say, hey, what's been going on in your life? You tell bedtime stories to your kids. It's the reason you check Facebook. It's because you want to know a story. An ad campaign that I found uh, incredibly effective, uh, two of them, one is that was about probably a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. It was by uh, for Dove Soap. They took a, a bunch of women into a room and asked them to describe themselves to a police artist who was on the other side of a sheet. And the artist drew their likeness. Then they brought in 
women who had met the woman who was being interviewed and said, now describe the woman you met. And the point of the piece was women are overly critical of how they look. This piece was, again, selling soap, but it was so well done. I have watched that. I have shared that video. It made me tear up. It made me feel emotional. And the, the reaction of the women when they see how they are perceived by other people was powerful. So you see that, and you can't go into a store and see Dove and not think, oh, yeah, I remember that stuff. That is uh, product um, product placement deep in the heart. The second one that, that really stuck with me is the one, I think it was last year, with uh, – uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme standing on a couple of Volvo trucks going going uh, um, backwards as they split, and he did the splits on the truck. And there's a – if you go to YouTube, you can see the clip, but if you dig a little deeper, you can see the advertising agency, how they put this thing together. And it was a remarkable bit of storytelling where they had the character do a, a voiceover and speak right to the camera. Then they did the stunt, and you can't turn away from it. And I've watched the thing three or 400 times. Well done. The last one is something I'm judging from uh, one of the Bulldog entries, and it was for a, a hotel chain, not, not an upscale one, just kind of a regular hotel chain, and they wanted to – Stand out in the market. And so the, the agency did something really remarkable, I think, about story, based on storytelling. They went and interviewed a bunch of moms who they found out through research, ultimately decide what hotel families stay at, what they do on vacation, where they go. And they asked for tips from moms for travel. And they built their campaign around, I think it might have been a hashtag, Ask Mom. And it was it was not only informative, but it was funny, and it made this chain stand out in, a, again, a very crowded marketplace. So how do you find these stories? Stories are not built on uh, the use of technology. Technology is simply a tool. So when we move this little screen here forward, what, what's not a story? So what's changed in the industry is I'm a reporter in a newspaper. I also have a Facebook page, author page for my books that I post stuff on. I have had stories of mine run at Reader's Digest. One's going to come out next October, and I'm going to be doing another story for them uh, that they pitched me. I have my own website. I know people in different parts of the industry. The point of this is you have to really think who is the best place to pitch a story to because that story can live on multiple, multiple ways. I'll give you an example from something that happened to me a few years ago. I got a very traditional press release that somehow floated over to my desk, and it was about a company that invented something where you can uh, supposedly take this pill before you drink, and it will prevent you from having a hangover. Okay, that's not going to run in a general interest newspaper, and most of those pitches are going to end up in a wastebasket. But I thought, that's that's really humorous. Does it work? So I pitched the idea to Esquire magazine. Hey, how about me trying this pill, getting smashed with a buddy, and having our wives be there as control subjects? They're not going to drink at all. And what happens? Well, Esquire ran the piece. So... One innovative and creative reporter or a TV person can give the story multiple lives. Now, I think a lot of people think about pitching something to local TV shows or, you know, we, we want to get the product placement. That That's really not as effective as finding the story. So when you, when you pitch your idea... You, I want you to go back about three or four steps. If you can't tell me or your people on your team or in your agency, why are we – what do we want to have people understand about this product, this person, or this company in a way that is meaningful? If you can't do that, you don't know what the story is. And the 
people who hire you or the people I go to interview for my job, they can't tell me the story. It really lies with you when you're out there doing the kind of interviewing a journalist does or a storyteller does. Tell me about yourself. Who are you? And what you're looking for is not a resume. You're looking for meaningful facts that reveal character or product or company. And one of the things that is, uh, I think, tough is when uh, I get pitches from, like, hospitals or organizations that want to, want to do something about um, a, a famous uh, doctor that's working there or maybe um, – somebody, a new program in, in the hospital. And those are tough stories because unless you're specifically interested in that, you're not going to read it. So what I look for are people that reveal the story. And I'll give you an example of something I did a few months ago. A woman who works on as a nurse's aide on one of the floors in the hospital works on the same floor where her sister died of a brain tumor six years ago, and her sister wanted to be a doctor. And so I told the story of this girl going back to the hospital where her sister died, and it got tremendous response. The, the, the thing about a good story is it lives on. I On my author Facebook page, I can post something and get incredible analytics, probably not the kind of analytics you guys have, but far more than just saying, did people like it? Most of my Facebook page posts on my author page Six, seven thousand um, shares and views, which is was pretty remarkable. And if you go to my page, Tom Hallman Jr. on Facebook, it's 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 they're all stories, they're all storytelling things. And um, so my my advice to you is to figure out the story. Now the media kit is not as not as big a deal. I'm going to go to this next slide. What is a story? So as I said, a story has meaning. Tell me, in, in uh, not not tell me, tell yourself what is the meaning of the story. Uh, it has to matter. We have to respond to it emotionally, not intellectually. And finding the heart of the story is going to be the most difficult thing uh, any of you do. When we have something emotional, it overrides our head and our and allows us to go right to the heart. It's the reason why somebody decides to buy a Fender Stratocaster over what could be an incredibly handmade guitar. Why? Because Fender has an emotional connection with the music, musician, the guitarist. They don't need to they can rely on that name on, and the backstory, the emotional backstory, to help sell their product. So, you, so what you, the storyteller's job is to figure out what is the story. Before I go ahead, does anybody have a quest, any question for me? I'm, I'm looking here on uh, um, my Twitter account. Or does anybody uh, want to ask Richard through the phone or this thing? Or is this, do I just keep going ahead, Richard? Yeah, Tom, I'm not seeing any stories in the queue right now, so just keep okay. watching them. Let me, re let me remind everybody, though, quickly that we will be taking questions, so uh, feel free to pose one to Tom if you have one. Uh, you can tweet him at thallmanjr, and remember to use the hashtag that's on your screen there, pound sign BDR Insights. Okay, Tom, thanks. Um, one of the things that I've discovered in – the kind of stories I do is that the person I'm interviewing often doesn't even understand what the story is all about. Why am I there? Now, if you're going to be, if I'm going to interview a politician or a prominent person, they have their own spin, their own agenda. But the people that have the most resonance with the people that read my stuff are people who are, quote, no name people. And, um, I got a pitch uh, that just came into the paper the other day that, that that could be a good story, but the pitch from the agency was pretty generic and didn't give me the kind of information that I'm going to need if I want to do the story. And it was about, uh, and I don't know the exact company, and even if I did, I probably wouldn't say it, but there's this, they have these lemonade stands around the country where they, they set them up and kids can raise money and for projects and things through using this lemonade. Now, that could be a pretty good story, 
But I'm going to have to go figure out who's the kid. Is, is there a good kid that would be a uh, profile? Is there a good um, uh, a good person to build the story around? And oftentimes, when I call back, the the agency doesn't know. They can tell me how many units of lemonade have been sold, but they they don't. They can't help me find the story. So one of the things I would really recommend you doing is, as a team in your agency or with your team within the agency, sit down and talk about, hey, what's a story? What is a character? What is a narrative arc? What is uh, a moment of insight? Because all of us use that same template, whether it's for advertising magazine, TV, or, or uh, print. And, and just as I spoke to you, one of my favorite ads, favorite ads, is on TV, and it tells a story without telling a story. It shows um, a woman shopping in the grocery store, and she's got a little kid that's kind of fussy in the, the um, grocery cart. And you hear uh, a radio announcer talking about the big storm coming, and so she starts putting a bunch of Campbell's soup in the can, uh, in the cart. And then as she's walking out, she grabs a bottle of wine and puts it in the cart. It fades out. Now, that is a great story because everybody can relate to the woman. We have a good feeling about the mom taking care of the kid through Campbell's soup. And it's realistic. It's, it's not uh, one of the Kardashians saying, hey, get Campbell's soup. It's just a regular woman shopping. And so what they did, the agency that created that did a tremendous job of saying, how do we tell a story about something as generic as soup? And what I've discovered in doing these um, bulldog uh, entries is I am really impressed with the skill level that goes into the campaigns and it doesn't these these campaigns don't necessarily succeed with uh huge budgets or using uh big time celebrities some of the entries that i found this year uh somebody would they would do a campaign and they would round up a bunch of celebrities uh and get placement on these like local tv shows the celebrity is going to drive that. But the ones that really stood out were somebody that had a product or an agency or a company that had nothing going for it. And they really, you could see in their supporting documents, brainstormed how to how to tell this story. So you need to know what the story is all about before you come to me to pitch it. Now, in this marketplace, how do you pitch stuff? There are very few newspapers anymore that have city desk where you used to send in a pitch. You need to start figuring out by getting on the internet and figuring out who covers the kind of thing that you uh, are pitching. Um, look at their Facebook. As I said, you send me an idea that's a good idea, I can pass it on to the features editor at Reader's Digest my Facebook, write it here, tell other freelancers that I know, hey, this might make a good project. My Knowing me, and there's many people like me in the in the country, are a, is a hub for you to get your best stuff out in, in really what is truly mass market. Um, so again, it, it's, what's great about this is this is absolutely a creative process. On this next slide, you can see why Facebook works so well with readers. And I was late coming to Facebook. I would tell my kids, uh, I don't really care. You know, nobody's going to care that I'm having a coffee, uh, you know, this week. You know, who, who cares? But what I've discovered is Facebook allows me to build a brand. And in this world, branding is absolutely critical. Your agency is branded. Uh, your clients want to be branded. And what uh, you can do is have uh, a, a 
agency or a personal Facebook page, and you can even toss out good story ideas and let reporters, writers know, hey, come here, we're going to post some ideas for what we're working on, and if you're interested, contact us. And what the, the beauty of Facebook, as I've discovered, and probably young people know this already, is the algorithms that can sort out what we're interested in. And as I said, when I first started my author Facebook page, uh, it was pretty limited in scope. I didn't really tell stories. I just talked about what I was doing. But since then, I've been telling stories about my life that do what I'm telling you to do, rate, relate to a bigger theme. And the reach of Facebook has been remarkable. I'm getting people that are coming to my page now that like a baggage handler at LaGuardia Airport. Um, and that's why this branding is absolutely critical. So what do we need from from you? And how do you convince me to do your story? Two things. One, it's got to either be local or it's got to be something that I can localize with national experts or with uh, a company that um, I, I can find a way to make readers in my area like it. Or it's such a great idea that I, you, you pitch it to a magazine and it's, an, it's a national story. What I need, I need exclusivity. I need access to uh, the people that are going to decide or have decided the course of the business or the product. And I don't, what I don't need from you guys is a lot of, uh, and I'm speaking for what all writers want, we don't need a, a um, transcript of an interview. We just want to say, hey, uh, we have, uh, we're, we're representing a company that's invented something and uh, it's going to make life easier for people who, who have a hard time getting up in the morning. L let me talk to the, the person who made it. Uh, maybe is there somebody in the company that hates getting up in the morning? Put me in touch with them. And again, let me tell a story. The myth about advertising, and I've discovered as an advertising viewer, is it doesn't have to be on the nose. And by on the nose, that's a screenwriting term for it. You don't have to hammer home what it's about. And one of the things I really like to do is go to YouTube and look at the advertisements, TV commercials from overseas, particularly Thailand and Asia. And these are like three or four minute long stories selling stuff about insurance or, or watches, but they tell a story that draws me in, makes me feel something, and makes me either tear up or laugh. And I think those are the, 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 um, the stories or advertising that, that work best. They're built on a structure of storytelling. Uh, let's see this next one here. Um, I guess that's the end of this, the thing. So what I'd be curious, if anybody's up for this, Tell me something you're working on that you think, hey, would would a re reporter or a TV person be interested in this story? Give me give me a pitch, and I'll tell you what what I would need or why it would not interest me or how I would how I would um, you know help you with that. Anybody got something? Now's a good time to pose your questions to Tom if you have a specific uh, question about a story you may be working on and trying to find the story in it. Uh, go ahead and uh, tweet Tom at thallmanjr and use the hashtag BDRinsights and we can discuss. I, I teach a writing class and um, to, to basically non-writers and what they have the hardest time doing is figuring out what the story is about. And I know that we're, we're in trouble when they say, I want to write about uh, this topic. And stories as well, and advertising are like songs. They are really hone in on a narrow 
part of an overall story or an overall organization and make the reader feel. And when you feel, you you're you're you you're linked to it. It's it's and it's why when uh you know when when I go down to a grocery store, am I buying am I buying something because intellectually I know the ingredients are there or does it like you know, Campbell's soup. Why is Campbell's soup such an effective product because, well, you know, um, most of the kids I knew grew up had Campbell's soup. Campbell's soup rep resonates. It's home. It's the past. So you buy the Campbell's soup. And what I'm saying is we need to be thinking about the stories we write, and I'm going to say you, when, when you write these, do you do that with your stuff? Do you try to get to the emotional heart of the of the product you're trying to cover? Like I'm thinking of something that was a – uh, one of the uh, bulldog entries that was really a clever entry. It was in the technology field, and it was this device that allowed people to uh, boost their signal on their cell phone when they were out of range. And one of the things they had to overcome was it's, it's damn confusing what that means. Why would I buy it? And the campaign was really well done in that it, it hit home about the story of somebody being unable to make the call, tackle the call, and here's a product that will solve that problem. And it was, it was a really well done campaign. And again, it didn't involve a lot of money. Let me check the Twitter, anybody? Uh, okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just seeing people retweeting what I've been saying. Anybody have – okay, somebody can answer me this question through Twitter. How many of your pitches get rejected, and what do you tell your clients? What do your clients want from you in terms of getting the message out? Hey, Tom, we have a question from Melanie in the Q&A. Do you mind if I read it out? Yes, go ahead. Perfect. So the story is that a girl grows up during the Depression. Both she and her sister need braces, but parents can only afford braces for one of them. And then another Melinda. I'll ask the second question after. So that's the first question. What do you think of that story, and what would you need to pitch it? Okay. I love the story. So let me recap. Girls grow up in the Depression. The parents can only afford braces for one, right? Yes. That's okay. Correct. All right. Now, there's, th there's multiple ways I would tackle this. Let's say the person is representing an orthodontic company. That's the kind of thing you can say, back in the day, braces were so expensive. It was like buying a used car or a new car. Things have changed, and at this, at this place, we try to serve customers who would no, not be able to get braces 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Now, you pitched me that story. As soon as I heard that, I, th I thought, okay, the girl who got the braces, does she feel guilty She didn't, that her sister didn't get them? What about the girl who who did? What about the orthodontist? That, that's a that's a that's a that's a good story idea, and and it's a good uh, it, it it reminds me of how those gentle dental ads that I see all the time, where they come in and they, they, the first one says, "Hey, the dentist is playing golf. You can't do here," and then the walls break away. They go, "Hey, we can get you in right now." This this is an idea, and I don't even know if this is a true pitch for a company, where you take something that most people really have no emotional impact with, braces, and infuse it with people. And what's really good about this is you're talking about young people getting braces. So that brings in a story of how the braces changed the life or didn't change the life. But that 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 could be that that could be a a powerful story. Who had the second question? Awesome. So the second question comes from Melinda. 
And Melinda asks, how do you best tell a story about a place that is still new, that doesn't have stories attached to it yet? Currently trying to pitch a newer section of a garden, but again, it's widely unknown. Okay, what was it? You were trying to pitch what? It broke up a little there on me. Oh, no problem. A botanical garden. Okay, this is here's now. Now, what what I want people to listen when I hear this, and this is what I want you all to start doing. It's what storytellers do. When you when you hear the idea, what's your first feeling? Now, when I first heard that a botanical garden, here's how my mind works. Now, none of these might be a story, but I want you to start thinking about this. A botanical garden could be a respite from a crazy world. It's it's better than a glass of wine. It's nature. You go out and you wander around in an hour for five bucks, ten bucks, whatever it costs to get in the place. You're renewed. That's one story. Another story would be uh, a, a nice profile on the gardener. Who tends those plants? Well, how do they spend the day with them as they're out there caring about it? A third story might be a business story. Okay, how do you, in a crowded market, uh, start something that's really for free? You can walk, you can see nature everywhere. So, here's a story for a business department, a business reporter. Not going to be as emotional, but it will be. There's something at risk. You start this botanical garden. Let's say it costs a hundred grand. Uh, you know, you, you've got all these flowers. You're, you're planting this stuff. Now that would be a story where, again, it gets back to this question of access. A reporter is going to want to sit down with the people who say, we're, we're going to risk this money. What was it like? What did you fear? What was it like when you were there? Do you ever go to the garden yourself? This is, again, it has a great, it has a really nice hook to it. And many of the most powerful stories are quiet stories. They are not about... Uh, the flash of something, but the quiet dignity of life. Uh, and so, like, let's say, let's say uh, a client is a uh, okay. I'll tell you an ad, another ad that I think is just absolutely amazing. That it, it, it does everything I'm talking about. It's a story for uh, about nursing. Yeah, it maybe lasts all of 30 seconds. I never turn it off when it comes on. It shows a male nurse inject on a little girl. Clearly, she's got cancer. She's wearing a little thing on her head. And he's saying, Hannah, Bobana, Fofana, as he injects this stuff. And then it, it distracts her from it. And he, he says, how are you doing? And she says, fine. And she looks up at him, and your heartstrings go. And it, it, it's an absolutely beautiful story. And that even might that might even be sponsored by Johnson and Johnson, but that's the kind of thing like a botanical garden. That's a botanical garden type of story. You, you, you're not writing about nursing. You're writing about or they're showing a story about one nurse and one patient. So if you can get a feature writer out to that botanical garden, that's a story. I, I, that would be a cool story. And a, and a storyteller might do something as just what I said in a noisy, crazy world. You don't have to fly overseas. You can drive out to the intersection or whatever, pay your 10 bucks and go to this garden. But uh, I like that. Did that help? The, 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 was it Melanie or Melinda that asked, asked that question? Uh, that was uh, Melinda. Okay. Did, did it help, Melinda? And let me ask you this. Is it a private botanical garden, a city garden? Oh, it's Melanie. I'm sorry, I'm not Melanie. She hasn't responded yet. But I have another question okay. here for you, Tom. All right. Okay. So, a, client, a client in the nutrition industry wants to be in the media every month in four specific markets. Our team has tried time and again to make each pitch new and exciting, but nutrition isn't always big news. What would you tell this client is realistic? I would say nutrition, if I'm doing the client, I'm saying, listen, 
everybody eats something every day. So you have the opportunity to have a story, but it can't be the same one. So is this nutritional, does it help with uh, health? Does it help with diet? Does it help you get stronger? Does it help you with your kids? Does it help you with your mom and dad as they age? What is it that we can find in this product that makes a story? And if you think about some of the successful transitions in my life that I've seen, think about adult diapers. They have Nobody even thought about that in the past. Now you see these things on TV, uh, and so they've realized they're, they're targeting a demographic. Now, so the nutrition thing. Uh, I know from doing stuff for uh, women's magazines and um, those type of publications, there, those are a constant feature of a magazine, usually around how to lose weight or to eat healthy or make your family eat healthy. So without, and I don't want to have the person say what the product is because we're in a big group setting here, I would break it down and say uh, what elements of this can be a story. The second thing I would tell the client, I'd say, you've got to be realistic. Would you rather have multiple stories that don't go anywhere, or one or two great ones in the year that are home runs. And uh, I think, again, it's w how we stand out in a, in a crowded landscape, how we brand ourselves. We're all, we're all branding. Uh, if, if you pitched a story, well, as I said earlier, you sent me a story that's about nutrition. My first instinct as a storyteller is going to say, is there a feature story I could build around that. If not, what I'll do is I'll say, hey, I'm going to send this to the health reporter or the food writer. So in a sense, I help re-pitch the story. But it ha you have to have enough stuff in your email to me where I'm intrigued. And it really stands out when I feel like the person has done, done some bit of research is why it's coming to me. And I just did that this morning with a story that came to me. The person or the agency was promoting or representing uh, an author slash expert on something that, that really isn't my area. But I wrote him back and I said, hey, there's another reporter here that does specialize in that area. Let me forward this to you. And by me forwarding it with my name gives it the pitch more credibility than if it had been just a blanket pitch to everybody um, in the newspaper. In the same way, um, in this, I think sto storytellers are a bit uh, of a client themselves. And I have to tell myself, not every story is going to be, uh, you know, get 25,000 shares, but it might get three. So. I think setting expectations is really important. Another, uh, one other thing that I, I remember hearing about, um, I thought was a very innovative way of doing uh, an ad campaign was for somebody who, and this is all storytelling, their agency represented a bunch of hotels pretty much down in the south, and they were not they were not fancy hotels. These were kind of places where people stay for a week or two at a time, truckers and, and people coming into the area to work on construction or job things. Uh, they'd leave their family behind and come in here. And, and they were kind of not dump hotels, but we're not talking Holiday Inn. And so they, the client wanted to try to brand them and, and do something. So. The little team came up with an idea. They did exact storytelling. They thought, who are the people that work at this place, or these places, and who are the customers? Who are the people that have come there? And they did some research, and they found that most of the, the people were men. Again, they were away from home for a week or two at a time. These places had little kitchens in them. And so they came up with an idea of creating 
uh, in a sense, branded the place, we're going to give you, when you check in and they advertise this, recipes for things you can cook in your room. And then each week, they did a little profile on Facebook of somebody who worked in the hotel. They told the story of the maid or the front desk person or the the it, you know the the, the 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 engineer, which got it had the effect of having a story every week through Facebook with a photo and a nice story, and they were really it, it was very very successful. And again, uh, I remember hearing about this and thought if I lived down there, they had one great idea, and it was just I. I I um, said it to a reporter in, who lived in that area. I said, this is a fantastic story if you, you do this. And what they were going to do for all the people in this one hotel on Christmas Eve, the hotel was going to have a Christmas dinner cooked there. And I thought, now that would be a great story. That That's a story about people who are alone, but through this hotel have a community and on this day, we think about community does something. That's a, that's a, that's not only a great story. I would love to write that story. And again, it brands the hotel as a caring kind of place. Okay, somebody sent me a question here. Um, uh, this person is working on something. Uh, oh, well, I guess it's all panels, so I guess I can read it. Uh, it says. Um, I'm involved in college radio. My organization is at risk of being disbanded. Other organizations on campus go for the notice us, save our organization. But there are but there are too many of that voice all happening at once creating noise. How can we break through that? This is the kind of thing that I think uh, you need a, a really uh, pithy slogan, something like I'm sticking off the top of my head. We speak for you, and and the the college radio does speak. It's it, it's the one place where people can call in, and you can speak for them. You can go find out questions for for issues. You can have forum for people can call in. You can have events. And I would go back to again. I'm thinking off the top of my head. I'm not an ad guy. But our country was built on the idea of community, community gathering places. And in an era when we are so isolated through Facebook and Twitter and things, we need a place where we come together and we can listen to different people and we can tune in. And, and this is a modern day community square, which is where our, uh, how our country was, was uh, the birth of it where we could exchange ideas and we can meet different people. So I would say, I would I would pitch it as we speak for you and we speak from the heart. I hope that that helped a little bit. Hey, Tom, I have a question here for you uh, that okay. came in. Uh, it's a short question, but I can see that there's probably a great story here. Emily asks, how would you pitch a company that invented a digital safety deposit box? Uh, I would use a little bit of humor on that. I see that right here. I would, I, the, the, the uh, and there's another great idea on here that I think is just fantastic. Somebody tweeted me. So let's get to the digital safety deposit box. I would, I would pitch it in the way like, uh, and I'm not sure exactly how it framed the pitch, but I would do something where we know, hey, my phone breaks, you know, my phone breaks or the, 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 the digital dies. Why, why is digital better than an old-fashioned key? And I would hit, um, I mean, I like this uh, right off the bat for a business kind of story, a business product story. And if, you've, if you have, email me and you tell me where, what city this is in, and I'll, I'll send you the name of some reporter if I know people in that city. This would be a really good little business story. And I think the, the, the pitch is pretty obvious that it's like as technology changes and we become more comfortable, we're going to the old, again, I'm thinking off the top of my head, bear with me, we're, go, we're, 
The last bastion of something is the safety deposit box, which you have that, you know, you think about the old Westerns on TV, they go into the bank and rob the safety deposit box. This is, technology is catching up to one of the last vestiges of banking. We are used to using debit cards and paying online. So these people, whoever invented this as a way to kind of bridge the, the past and the present and the future. And it, it's a great idea because you think you can talk about hacking and how do you come up with a good code, all those things. This is a good email me and I, I'll help you on that one. I like that idea. Somebody else had one here. It says, my client is ballet for all kids, a dance instruction for special needs kids. That, that's, that's an easy sell. I love that story. And ask yourself, why does Tom like that story? It's, it's, it's tender. It's a story about one of the kids coming in. It's a story about the teacher. It's about uh, why – it's a story about how we don't need to be perfect to dance. The dance is about letting go, about being free. Uh, if I was doing that story, I'd love to build the story around starting at one of the kids' homes and coming to the school and, let's say, the kid uh, – is is not able to engage in the world in many ways, but at this ballet place, for one hour or whatever, magic happens. And put I would I would put the reader right there. That's a story that lends itself to video. This is the kind of story that's a definite, absolute Facebook share story. I did a story uh, this week. If you're going to go to my Tom Homer Jr. Facebook page and you can like it, so you can follow these things. I do, I'm going to be, and I'm going to be doing these monthly or weekly kind of column stories that are exactly what this uh, ballet for kids thing is all about. A little boy in Portland uh, died last year when he was 20 months old. He had a seizure and died, and his parents decided uh, um, they donated his organs, and then then they thought about. Uh, you know, people will forget him. And so they started this thing called For the Love of Otis, which is a thing where you, you do something kind for somebody else and you put the hashtag for the love of Otis. So I did a story, and the way I framed the story, if you go see it, is a story. Well, you know, it, it took off on Facebook. It, it, it had a, on, on the newspaper online side, it had like 2,000 shares. On my Facebook, it's it's gone around, it's, and the this, this story has gone around the not only the country but other countries. This ballet for kids story, that's a classic story that would be shared on uh, a Facebook page. Now, if Rhonda is going to do this story, if it was me, I would say. I would go to a newspaper to pitch this story more than a TV because a newspaper can do, tell the story in depth and newspaper can do high quality video and by having something on the newspaper print edition online with the video and then they'll tweet at Facebook, it's really a home run story. It, it's just, it, that, that's a, I love that story. I wish they had one out here because um, I would do that story. That, those are the kind of stories that I like. But, Rhonda, you got a great idea there. You got a, That's a really good one. And anybody that uh, doesn't feel comfortable weighing in now or has questions in the future, you can uh, contact me through personal message on Twitter, or go to my Facebook page, and, um, you know, I've been in the business 40 years. I know I, I know people that, if it's not my kind of story, I know people that, uh, like a, a friend of mine uh, who works in Chicago on a magazine, his wife is in the TV, there's, there's, it's about knowing, it's about hit, it's about pitching your idea to the right person that can do the most with it. And that uh, that that ballet one, that that's just a great story. I wish I was that had come to my desk. Hey, hey Tom, I have a quick question for you. This is Richard. Uh, a little bit more about logistics and actual content, but uh, um, 
you know, we're always hearing about how journalists are, you know, bombarded, you know, with work. You know, they're often tackling multiple beats, you know, and having all kinds of assignments laid on them. they got to monitor their social feeds, and, you know, they're pretty much racing other journalists uh, in real time for every scoop and so on. Uh, and some of these stories may not have as much of a breaking news, quote, unquote, element. Do you, do you think that there's a particularly good time of day, for example, or time of the week? you know, to, to try to get a reporter's attention with a story like this? Uh, good question, Richard. I would say, like, on, let's say the ballet one. That's a story, this is where you have to use strategic pitching, and so I would say this applies to everybody. If you have something, you go, this is a, we have something good here, do not send out blanket pitches to everybody. Figure out who in that market is the kind of person that does the work that this story would fit. Then email. I like email better. Uh, just say the the the, the tweet uh, that I got about the ballet for kids. Right there, that's an absolute. You, you're going to get my attention. What I'm going to want to know is, okay, is this mine? Are you going to give it to the TV? Everybody else? Because if you start giving it to everybody else, I don't want to do it. And so when you have a great story. Uh, get it to the right person who can do it. I would say uh, any good reporter is going to naturally gravitate towards a great story. We're not that busy that if I'm in the middle of doing something else and this ballet thing showed up, for example, I wouldn't say, oh, my, this is going on my story list. Uh, everybody might have their own thing. I would say uh, know the time zone you're – you know, if you're sending something from uh, New York and you remember, you know, the time zone difference, I, for me, I like getting stuff in the morning up until, let's say, 10 o'clock. And uh, if, it's, if it's a mass-produced pitch, you can tell, like, it's like if I'm getting pitches about stuff about uh, women's fashion, hey, Tom, I've got this, I realize they're just, they got my name off of some mail list, it's, and, and it's, it, it's not thoughtful. But if I get something, hey, Tom, I checked out your stuff uh, at the paper and on Facebook. I think we have a really good story here. It, it, here it is. Could, could we set up a time to talk? Then I'm, I'm going to call you back. Because remember, storytellers want good stories. We live and breathe those. This ballet thing, whoever that lands up with is going to have a fantastic story. Now, your job as a uh, person pitching, you don't want to give a, such a great story to someone who can't pull it off. So you're not going to send it to somebody who doesn't have the chops to do it because this is a story with nuance and feeling and, and, and poignancy and power. So you do it the right way, it will get in there. Um, again, we're not that busy that we're not going to, that we're not going to, uh, we're not going to read it. Okay, I got a, a question here from somebody else. Um, this is one uh, uh, a story about an equity theater company in an area surrounded by community theaters who say they are professional because they have professional staff, but the actors are not equity. Uh, so I'm going to make sure this right. So this, what kind of story would you tell for an equity theater? I would, I would try to, again. Some, humor is the kind of thing that works on this, and I would, this I would play off on this one. Um, what makes a professional actor? And an equity is more. I'm just going to make some stuff up off the top of my head. And an equity is more than just like a union. It's like saying, if if you have a cover band that says hey, we're doing Rolling Stones covers. That's not the Rolling Stones. So I would say uh, I would try to build a story around this, around a, a one, of the, one of the people in the theater and their journey to become equity and what equity means to them. And, again, I would have a narrative arc of this story where I would say to the storyteller, come to some practices. Watch, watch what they do. Watch how they do it. And, and my story, if I'm writing this, would probably end with the curtain coming up on the opening night. But it, it's a story about the people. Um, 
Okay, what would you tell us? Okay, we've done, oh, we, okay. The media's not interested. That's, you just haven't, send me an email about what town this is in, will you? And uh, send it to me, and, because you have a story here, and you can pitch me the idea, not on here, and I'll tell you what's working and what's not working. So, so uh, I'm, I'm going to probably mispronounce your name, so I'm going to try it, but, but send me that. And, uh, and I will get back to you, probably not today, but I am very diligent about responding to people. Um, Here's another one, a uh, quick one, Tom. Oh. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, this is a question from Michael who just chimed in, and uh, this is an interesting one. ties back into the pitch traffic and congestion you were talking about uh, a minute ago. He's saying, uh, with all the with the opioid crisis so saturated in the media right now, how do we tell our story about prevention? You know, amidst all that traffic. This is okay. Uh, there, the, what he's talking about is a company or preventing opioid addiction or, or over uh, prescription or use of it. Uh, I would. I would. Now this is a tough one because you get into it depends on if you get into with a doctor HIPAA all these regulations, but again if I'm a I'm thinking like this is a storyteller, I would say something like I would want to have I would open up a story where I get to look at the pill and say it's it's just a blue pill, and uh, I would want to talk to who's ever going to be prescribing how does it work in the body and. Uh, why is it so addictive? Uh, this this is an e that's an easy story to sell right now because there's just it's an issue that is sweeping the country and people are talking about it. Uh, again, feel free to, to private message me on Twitter and I'll help you form that one. Okay. Somebody had here one. How do you tell a story for a clothing brand that inspires people to go for their dreams? Uh, I'd have to know what kind of clothing. Like, let's say it's a. Uh, let, we're gonna we're talk off the top of my head. Let's say it's a uh, dress wear uh, or, or suits for for people or casual. It depends on what does the story about the clothing uh, reveal. And I might even think about something like uh, play off the line about the emperor has no clothes. But the clothes are what make a person, and the clothes reveal what's hidden inside. I, again, a dream. I, I mean, you know, I, without knowing more about it. Oh, streetwear clothing. Okay, this, this is probably going to show my age. Is streetwear like what is streetwear clothing? And you can just you can uh, send me what that is. It shows my uh, my age probably here. <laughs> All right, and we're nearing the end of our hour here, so uh, it's oh, time one to one thing. Uh, anybody oh, yeah. anybody that wants anybody that wants to follow up, text me or uh, Twitter, you know, message me. The second thing is, I have a, an anthology of my workout. If you go to Amazon, you'll see it. And these, I've won every prize you can win in the business. These are these are how these are good stories, and you will look at them and, and if you've studied them after reading them as a reader, saying, hey, if I had to boil this story down that Tom wrote. What is it about and how does he tell it? So again, it's called Dispatches from 1320. It's on Amazon.com. Uh, again, I'm, I've got, I'm a, I'm a storyteller and I, I love stories. I'm always open to a pitch. If it's not for me, I'll pass it on to somebody else. If it's, if it's, if, if it's good, I'm going to grab it. In the same way, if you're a musician and you hear a riff on a guitar, you go, that's great. I want that. I want to build on it. So remember, help the storytellers find the stories, give them access to what you are, are representing or the people, and then let the magic happen. And when it, when it does happen, it, it, it's remarkable because remember, people... People want stories. We hunger for stories. It's wired into us, and uh, no matter what technology we use, it's not going to change because a story engages this deep part of our brain that has nothing to do with logical explanation. 
you feel it. I've been there. I've been walking down the thing, and it's a snowstorm, and I'm getting soup, and I'm also going to grab that bottle of wine. Uh, people, audiences, readers, tune into emotion. And again, if you see the stories in my book, some of them are funny, but they're all emotional. And we crave we crave that. And if you can find a way to give people that, you will stand out in a sea of people dealing strictly in factual information because facts don't mean anything. It, it, it's the it's it's story that the facts reveal that matter. I hope you got something out of this. Bulldog Reporter is a great source for storytelling, creative thinking, creative structuring, Come back, uh, and uh, again, anybody needs anything, message me. All right, that is great. Thank you, Tom. Those are some incredibly deep insights today. I hope everybody got some good stuff out of that. I'm sure you did. And we will share uh, information about Tom's book that he mentioned on our feed after the webinar. So keep an eye out for that and find out more information there. And thank you to everyone who's listening for joining us in the first of what is sure to be a fantastic webinar series. And we hope to see you back next time. You can watch our feed for updates about the next event. And have a great day, everybody. Thanks.